Hey, good morning folks. Rick from La La Farm. We did a thing. We got us a generator. Not that generator. No. This generator. We've already got a 22 kW whole house uh, um, uh, generator on an automatic switch. So if we lose power, the house has power um, automatically. It just switches over um, and uh, wham, continued electricity. What we got was a generator for use around the farm. And in particular, when we are boondocking in the camper where we don't have access to um, the typical uh, camping utilities such as electric. We can carry on board water, uh, we carry on board gas, but we can't carry on board electricity without some external source such as a generator. So that's what we've got. Uh, at the recommendation of a friend who's been using this unit for some period of time, we got us this Onan P4500 um, digital inverter generator for use with our RV. All right, so let's take a tour around this unit. So I'm just going to go through the controls right here. I kind of tell you what I like about it, what it does, and what I like and don't like about it, or if I don't have an opinion. Now this is a brand new unit. We just took it out of the box. So we're going to go through the controls. We're going to go th kind of through the how this thing is built. Uh, show you a little bit about that, and then we're actually going to put oil in it put fuel in it and uh, get it started for the first time so we're gonna take you on a tour here so starting right in the middle here and the main reason we got this unit we have two 20 amp outlets here and a 30 amp outlet here 30 amp outlet is what we use for our rv so our rv will plug directly into this outlet right here the circuit breakers so each one of these outlets this is for the 20 amp outlet and what i like about this if you look really close here it's got a rubber 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 boot over that so no dust no dirt can get into that now these can be replaced as well so they just turn right off which is really cool um so this 20 amp breaker for this, this is a 30 amp breaker for the RV plug. Um, and we have over here more plugs. These are to plug uh, USB devices into. So these are only 2.1 amp. Then we have the whole unit reset breaker. So if this whole thing were to trip, then we can reset the breaker right here, just like in your fuse box. This is the whole unit breaker. So this breaker limits the entire unit output. If we begin to draw more than 31 amps off of this, this is going to trip. We unplug some of the load and reset it right here. Um, now, this unit can be adjusted depending upon how much, what the load is on it. We can run what's called efficiency mode. And efficiency mode um, is nothing more than a switch right here called eco mode. Again, this has got a rubber boot on it, so it's off. But if we want to turn it on, then the unit is going to sense what the load is, and it's going to adjust the amount or output of the fuel that's being consumed to generate just enough power um, to meet that load demand. So we're going to turn that back off. This right here is a ground terminal just what it says if we wanted to ground this to an external ground then this is where that ground uh, would be hooked to um, this is the led data center so all of the information that uh, this will unit will automatically calculate is going to display on these leds or on this led output here as well as these little led displays here so what we get down here is the remaining runtime on the unit, what the power output is, uh, the fuel level, and um, you know, so how much of the remaining fuel do we have, what's the output voltage, and what is the lifetime hours that this unit has been running. We go out here to these LED displays here. 
This first one is for output ready. That means that the unit has stabilized and is running uh, at uh, uh, running sufficiently to be able to, to hook up a load to it. Uh, that second LED, this one here, is the uh, overload LED. So if the unit begins to become overloaded, then that will light. And then the third LED, this one here, is for low oil. Okay, up here is a battery charging port. So if you've ever used a trickle charger on a piece of, of equipment, whether that be a motorcycle or a piece of garden equipment, something where uh, you leave, you can plug your trickle charger up to that, uh, up to that uh, device so that the battery does not go dead or go bad. So you're constantly keeping a, a reasonably good charge on that. So if this is not operating, then we can essentially hook a trickle charger up to this unit right here, which will keep the internal battery charged up here this is the fuel control switch so that's off that's on so that's going to manipulate the valve in here that will turn the fuel on and off to the unit this right here this is the start indicator so this unit is an ultra quiet unit so this you'll be able to see without even hearing the unit to tell whether or not this light is always going to be lit when the unit is turned on so moving over here, this is the on off switch. So when we want to start this, we have two sources to start it, either the on off switch or by a pull cable. And this actually can be um, actually turned on, on and off remotely with this key fob. Again, we haven't even started this. We're going to be seeing that today as we uh, get this thing set up and ready to run. This is the engine control switch here. So right now it's off. That would be the on position. So in order to turn it on, we need to turn that on. That's basically going to connect the power in this unit to uh, the, uh, the power from the battery to power the unit itself. And then we have two ports right here. These are what's called parallel ports. So this, if we wanted to hook another accompanying unit, another one of these Onan P4500s or even the 2500, if we wanted to operate um, those units in parallel and actually increase the power output potential to about 40 amps, then we can run those units side by side and this is where they would be hooked into. So these are the parallel couplings to get that higher, um, higher amp load uh, if we needed that. So that's the control panel. Coming over to the side here, you see this panel right here. Got little uh, Phillips head screws to remove this panel. This is actually the engine service panel. So we take this panel off and we'll have access uh, to the engine. The fuel fill is on the top, just as we would expect. Now this unit comes with roller wheels and a telescoping handle. So we can actually pull this thing around like like a, like a suitcase and then a little push button pushes it back in it automatically comes with two uh, holding handles front and back to make this thing easier to lift again this weighs about 80 to 90 pounds uh, with fuel it'll weigh probably closer to 100 pounds there's a battery access panel on the back which we'll show you when we hook up the battery and it has an automatic choke on it so um, when we're trying to do cold weather starting, this, will, this unit will automatically choke itself um, to uh, aid it in getting started. Now, that would be a perfect application for today since uh, it is uh, in the 30s when we woke up. When we woke up this morning, it was 34. Uh, by the time we got out and going, it was about 37. So we're probably still in the upper 30s, low 40s uh, in January in Northeast Florida. So let's get uh, this thing set up to get started. Coming from around from the front side, so this will be the right side of the generator, you'll see this cover right here. Simply a little pull tab. And right here is where we're gonna fill the oil for this unit. So I'm gonna turn the unit around so we're working from the front. So this is the box that came with the unit and it has some basic tools in it. So this is the funnel that we'll be using to do the oil fill. So you can see from when we looked at where that oil fill um, cap is that we're going to have to reach down into that casing um, inside of the outside cover uh, to be able to get to that oil fill hole. So having uh, this funnel 
that came with it uh, will allow that to be done pretty pretty easily. You could also use a standard uh, kind of long, long spout uh, funnel if you have one, but that's kind of cool that they provide this. Also in the kit is the initial four-stroke uh, SAE 10W30 small engine oil. So it comes with the original um, oil um, fill. So you don't have to go to the store and get more oil. Also comes with this little box. Remember I said I talked about the trickle charger. So this will allow you to charge that battery. So if you're not using it and you're at home, you can kind of keep the battery plugged in so that uh, you're keeping a good charge on that battery. So it comes with its own trickle charger. And lastly, has some basic hand tools in this little pouch. So that includes a really cheap screwdriver or Phillips head screwdriver. And there's a flathead, so that's reversible. Really cheap plastic hand, but you know, they're one once in a while tools, so you wouldn't expect them to be particularly well made. And then it comes with a uh, with a socket and the T to be able to control that socket. So those are the tools that come with the unit. I'll just slide them back in here because I don't think I need them yet. I'll be using that screwdriver in a bit. Let's get this oil put in. As I said earlier, right here is the fill cap. And that's where we're going to be taking that cap off. We're going to hook that funnel up and then fill it from right there. Now, like any like any motorized piece of equipment, you don't want to overfill uh, the unit with oil. So we're going to stop a few times during this fill um, to make sure uh, that we're not overfilling this. So here's the dipstick. Very easy to read. You got a low mark down here. You got a high mark right here and all of this cross hatching in the middle uh, that is the acceptable oil level so anywhere within this range is an acceptable oil level here is the extension funnel and you can see this is threaded so this is going to thread right into that hole which is kind of cool so this this is much better if you can if you have this don't lose it um, so we're going to screw that into that oil, engine oil hole and it, auto, it comes with a washer as well to kind of seal it. We're going to go ahead and cut that off. And now we're going to put the oil in. Then we're going to unscrew this, put the dipstick back in, and check it. And now you can see that that oil is just on that very last hash mark before we get to the high level. So there's a little bit of oil still left in here because we've got just a splash still in that uh, oil bottle. So we will stop there. Because any more is probably going to put it over that um, over that line. So oil's in it. So then we just we check the level. So now we're just going to go ahead and put this cover back on. Press that off. You know here this has got a uh, metal chain instead of one of those little plastic cables with a little T-hook on the end to hold it in. So I like that. A little bit sturdier. So this took almost the full five gallons of fuel, which is pretty cool. Now the manual on this says that we should get about eight, eight and a half hours or so uh, on a full tank of fuel. So, but however, if we run it in efficiency mode, then it's only going to consume enough fuel to meet the load demand on the unit itself. So we could potentially get significantly more than that, depending upon the load that we put upon the unit. 
Now the type of fuel that this unit takes, uh, it gives some very specific uh, instructions on what those requirements are. So number one, unleaded fuel only. I don't even know where you would get leaded fuel today, or at least not in the United States. Maybe they sell it in other parts of the world, but they certainly don't sell it here. Second is a gasoline with no more than 10% ethanol. Gasoline with an octane rating of 87 or higher. Um, so that's the requirements for fuel on this unit. So here is the battery access panel. We're gonna take that off. And then this, so you've got, this is what's coming off the battery here. And then this little pigtail here goes into the unit. So we're basically gonna connect those we're going to connect those two. And there we go. A good solid battery connection between those two connections. This side coming from the battery and this side going into the generator unit. Flip this right back on. Oh, battery shut off. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing started up. Um, we're still sitting up on the tailgate, so I'm going to start it up, kind of stabilize it uh, so I can get a good angle on this for uh this video and then uh I'll probably turn it off put it down on the ground and then start it up again with the uh manual pull and then let it stabilize and then probably hook it up to the camper so we'll go through that process so first is the electric start so we want to make sure that nothing is plugged into any of the outlets so the 20 or 30 amp outlets we want to make sure that the battery is connected which it is we've already we've uh, just went over that make sure that the circuit breakers are properly set so we got three circuit breakers here this one which is the overall unit which allows it not to exceed 31 amps this is the 30 amp travel trailer breaker and the 20 amp um, three pole like you would normally see in your house okay uh, we're going to turn the fuel control valve on this one here we're going to turn the engine control switch to the on position right there and we're going to push and hold the engine start button for one second this light here is green that means it's sufficient the, the unit is stabilized sufficiently to begin plugging items into your jacks or into the USB over here so now if we turn this eco mode on you know, it slows down it's only going to provide enough juice for what the load is and since we have nothing plugged into this right now there's no load on the unit so it slows down and it's, it's consuming less fuel now So there we go. So the start sequence here is exactly the same. We've already got our fuel power or our fuel uh, control flow on. We're gonna switch on the unit power battery and, uh, I want to take this off of here and then as one swift pull hopefully we'll start this here means that this is output ready so we're going to disconnect the travel trailer from the house plug it into the 30 amp circuit here 
go into the camper and make sure everything is working and a-okay. So now the camper, the RV is on, is on generator power. Let's go in and check out the electric. That's all the lights are on. Let's put some load on this thing. You notice here, this is the refrigerator. That light is green. I would say this is a success. Let's go out, turn this thing off, and wrap this one up. All right, so to turn this off, you need to unplug any load that you have on it. So we're gonna unplug the trailer. Now there's no load on the unit. We're gonna turn off the fuel control now there's no fuel going to this engine, so it should stop soon. So that will let this just kind of run itself out. That's going to clear fuel up or, or get rid of the fuel that is still in the line. It's not going to take it out of the out of the uh, carburetor bulb, but there's no fuel now going to it. So this should run just a few more minutes and then stop. So it's run itself out of fuel. So we're going to switch this back off to the off position, which disconnects the battery from the actual generator. All right, folks. So that is it. I hope you uh, found this informative. Um, I think we're going to be pretty happy with this unit. Um, really easy to get started, really easy to operate um, with a good flexibility between electric start and manual start. Um, pretty intuitive, if you ask me, in terms of, of uh, unit operation. So we're going to go ahead and sign off from this one. Always remember, folks, treat others as you would like to be treated. Lala Farm, out. <laughs>